What is up, my squirtle lights? It is I, your king. Welcome you back to more Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. In the last episode, we made it here to Lily Cove City, and I just realized I actually haven't healed my Pokemon uh, between them. You know what? It doesn't really matter. I don't need to heal my Pokemon for everything that we're going to be doing in this episode. There's a lot to talk about. So many things to go over in the city, because this is the most involved place in the entire game. This is... This is the equivalent of Johto's Goldenrod, of... Uh, of Kanto's Celadon, of... I mean, there's so many different... Uh, there's obviously one in, like, every single game that I can talk about. I mean, it's not quite Lumio City, but, yeah, it's pretty big. So, we got Lily Cove Museum over here. Now, this is sort of an important place, um, at least for some things that will be going on later. There's nothing really of relevance yet, but talk to this guy. I'm the curator of this Museum of Fine Arts. It's heartening to see someone so young as you in your museum. Have you viewed our collection of paintings already? I can say saw it or not yet. I'm gonna say saw it. Oh, I do believe that you seem to be a Pokemon trainer. Have you an interest in paintings, too? Yes. Excellent. Do you like paintings? But then may I ask you to come with me? So let's follow this guy. This is our special exhibit hall. As you can plainly see, there is not a single painting on exhibit. Here, I don't wish to exhibit works of so-called classical art. Such classical works you can see on the ground floor. I wish to exhibit work that is far different from the classics. Art, after all, is not restricted to old famous works. This exhibit hall I wish to fill it with. Modern and vibrant artworks of Pokemon seemingly ready to spring forth in a glorious life. I beg your pardon. I didn't intend to monopolize the conversation. Now, as you are young and yet obviously well-traveled, you must encounter lively Pokemon and works of art depicting them. If you were to come across such a painting, maybe we ask you to obtain this artist's permission to exhibit it here. And he doesn't give you a yes or no, but don't worry about it. So there are five painting slots. Just five, okay? Keep that in mind. We'll, we'll discuss it later in this episode. But there are five. That is imp the only thing you need to know about this place. There is really nothing of relevance. I don't think talking to anybody gets you anything in here. But we're going to move on from there. Let's head on into the department store next. So it's obviously it's a department store. It's like any other department store. There are some... I, I think there's an item you can grab in here. From, like, one of the guys. Yeah, I need to stock my items. Okay, maybe you. Learn to use items possibly. No, okay, no. Uh, welcome. How may I help you? I want to say one of these has the TM shop. They might be on the upper floor. Let's find out. Nope. Oh, actually, I do want to talk to you, though, because I would like to restock up on Super Repels. So let's do that really quickly. Yeah, we'll go with that many. I don't even care. That's overkill. I'm going to get it all right back here in a second by selling some things off. So let's sell these nuggets really quickly. I'm also going to sell my leaf stone because I have no use for it. And then I also got a star piece I can use. There we go. We got a big pearl I can use. Awesome. Some mech mail I'll never ever use. Perfect. All right, now that that's all of that is done. Actually, did you have the potions on you? You did. I'm going to grab some hyper potions here. So let's grab 16 of those. I know it's a lot of money, but that's okay. And now let's keep moving. So we're going to head on up a little bit further. Now this one, let's see what we got here. Right here we got, okay, a bunch of X speeds and all those kinds of things that you can get. We've got, here we go, we got protein, calciums, all those kinds of goodies if you ever want to get vitamins the old-fashioned way, which is not the most lucrative way of doing it in my opinion, but you can get them that way. Uh, this one right here is the TM. So... Right here we have, I want to say this is like, so this is protect here, present status of normality with a mystical power. I can't remember which one this one is. 33, that is light screen and, oh no, sorry, that's light screen and that, no, that's reflect, excuse me, and that's light screen. I want to say that's safeguard. I think TM20 is safeguard. So if you need any of those kinds of moves, that's your place to get it. This is where you're going to get actual attacks. So you got TM38, which contains Fire Blast. TM25, which contains a Thunder. I am going to grab myself one of those. We got TM14, which contains Blizzard. And we got TM15, which contains Hyper Beam. And I am going to also grab one of those. Okay, so all that remains is the top floor. And this is where you're going to get all of your secret base items. So right here, you're going to have a bunch of posters that you can get. No, these are not the same as, like, don't think that these are, like, equivalent to the paintings that are in the museum. They're not. You can get these for your secret base. Um, some dolls as well. I don't know what this one has. Is this chairs? This is mats. Okay, so you can get some mats here. Uh, jump and spin mats actually have an, and glitter mats actually have an effect to it. Um, but the other ones are just designs. So there's that. And then we head on over this way. And we have our cushions which these are just basically chairs. They're just supposed to look nice. And then last but certainly not least are the Polka Dolls for all sorts of different cute Pokemon. None of your crazy Pokemon dolls, but like if you want a Pikachu doll, that's where you get it. Now we can go up one more floor, but there's nothing to be bought up here, just a bunch of people to talk to. 
Now, the one thing that is really nice about this place... I know, would you be interested in having a Pokemon Learner Substitute? So right here we have a Move Tutor for Substitute. I'm not going to do this because I don't need Substitute. Substitute is a move where you basically put out a little decoy that allows to... That basically will just take hits for you, or a certain number of hits for you, while you're able to attack. Um, I'm not going to do it though, and you... Um, I do think... Substitute take away health? I actually cannot remember. I actually can't remember, but um, regardless, yeah, basically you put up a decoy in front, the other Pokemon attack it until they break it, and basically it allows you to, if they can't take it out in one turn, basically gives you multiple turns where you can just attack freely without worrying about taking any damage. Those are a vending machine here, and I did not want to get fresh water. Gosh dang it. This is probably the best place to get soda pop because it's a lot faster than getting soda pop from the other guy, so I'm going to get a couple of those, although there is lemonades, which are technically a better value. Um... But I'm not, I'm not too worried about it, honestly, so if you're patient, wait for that. Go to that vending machine, and then you'll be able to get a lot more. There are vending machines all over the place in future games, but in this game, there's just those two. This is the same way as it was in Generation 1, if we're being honest. All right, let's get on out of here now. That's the department store for you. I think there is an item I could have grabbed in there, but it's nothing, like, super amazing. If I missed out, oh well. Why is there a Team Aqua Grunt here? Hey, you, don't go near the cave in the cove. Why? You don't need a reason why. I'm an adult, so just listen to me. It's not very convincing, but all right. Got move to leader's house. I want a Pokemon moves deleted. So I'm actually going to head on in here, and we're going to talk to this guy. Ah, yes, the move to leader. I would like you to do that indeed, because I want you to make Pandora forget. Wait for it. Cut. Yeah, I don't need you. I don't need that anymore now that I have Slash. All right, there we go. Awesome. That's the only way you can get rid of HMs, by the way. And we can also watch the TV really quickly. In search of trainers. Hi, today I'm visiting an area near Route 120. We're trying to spot some up-and-coming new talent in the field. Today we turned our lens on the trainer. Levi, there's something about this trainer to pick your... Yeah, you've already done this before. I get it, I get it, I get it. New are onto something special. Best way to determine... Yeah, fastest way to battle. This is how we ended up in battle. We were flattened, rolled into the side. Ruth is he strong. Combination of Grovile and Whiskash was divine. The side of them, Grovile and Whiskash, selflessly supporting each other in the thick of battle. It was a marvelous sight to behold. Earthquake was the move the trainer used last in our battle. The move Earthquake is Grovile and Whiskash to sign a friendship, I suppose. Trainer said they were satisfied with the battle or something like that, and that's deep, and I guess. And we're going to sign off for the last time, because uh, this trainer is never going to rebattle us again. All right. Moving on. Let's go on in here. This guy. Pokemon are partners to people. There are tools. Unfortunately, there are some people who fail to understand. Okay, I thought that guy gave me something, but I guess not. There are more Aqua Grunts down over here. This guy, I think it's right down to it. The same way suits suit me perfectly. A crisp breeze suits the sea, and you, a berry, suits you to a tea. So this guy is another daily berry guy. He is only going to give you the medicinal berries, like Pecha, like Ross, like Le uh, not Lepa, actually. Um, Orin, I think, maybe? We moved here. I moved more loot in our secret hideout today. Who are you? I was just talking to myself. I'm just a grunt, so I don't know what the boss is thinking, but being on Team Aqua, I know I'll get the chance to do big things. Who are you? I was just talking about. Okay. Um... You know, a peculiar cavern in this cove, They had that had been a natural formation, but then that Team Aqua lot came along and made the renovations. They called themselves the nature-loving Team Aqua, but what, did they, what they do and they say don't match at all. Good point, sir. Very good point. Huh, whoa, what's that? I'm not near awake yet. You can have this. And so we got TM44, and that is just rest, basically. Pokemon falls asleep and then allows, um, allows them to regain all of their health. Obviously, I'm not going to be teaching that to any one of my team members because it is much more of a stall tactic. Now, granted, if you do have a Pokemon that is that revolves its moveset around the likes of Snore and Sleep Talk, it can be useful. But I digress. So, some items to be grabbed out here. I think there's one on some of the rocks, maybe, possibly. Yes, indeed. Oh, a Pokeball. Okay. So, one on this rock over here as well. Nope. One right here in the middle. Nope. We got another Grunt. There, Wilmer, leap out of the water now. Huh? What do you want? You're messing up our training. So can you, like, get lost? So that right there, where those Mil Wilmer are sitting, that is the path out of Lily Cove, so we cannot head any further to that direction. Also, if you head on up here, you can see the opening to the, um, to the hideout that Team Aqua constructed. However, I'm just going to spoil it right away. You can't actually go any further in there. Once you get inside, you will be blocked off by a bunch of grunts, and that's that. So don't think that you can get into there just yet. Now, let's head on down this way. By the way, if you haven't noticed, uh, Lily Cove does not have a gym. I know it's this huge city. That is what separates it from a lot of the other big cities. But it's a huge city and yet doesn't have a gym. It's kind of crazy. Um, anyway, this is the motel. What are you watching, sir? Oh, sorry. Hey, down in front. I can't see. That. Okay, fine. Well, I guess I can't watch. Jeez. I don't think there's anyone. Oh, there's Scott. Hi there. 
Mm. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I was snoozing. I came to check out this Pokemon contest thing. I have to admit, it does look quite entertaining, but... Consider me a purist. I prefer battles and tough trainers, but that's just me. Levi, I hope you'll enjoy battling, like, uh, everything. Like, the gyms, contest, battle tent, the whole works. Alright, well, we're done with the battle tents anyway. We've already seen all of them. I mean, we didn't challenge any of them, but I didn't really have the intention of challenging any of them anyway. Alright, enough dawdling. Let's talk about this place. This right here is the Lily Cove Contest Hall. All contests in the game take place here. We will be going over how contests work in full at a later time, but as a brief rundown, let me just explain the way that they work. Contests are completely separate from battles, completely independent. They do not work the same way at all. In fact, let's go into my summary and look at one of my Pokemon. Let's let's look at Toothless, all right? Let's go to my summary. So if I go over, you can see here's all my moves. But then if I go to the next stage, you can see Cool, Cool, Smart, and Smart. As you can see right here, we have an effect and a jam. So the way that this works, well, I should I'll first say that a Pokemon is going to have an affinity level. Um, this is going to be affected by, if I can, I don't think I can check it from here. I'm trying to remember where you can check it at. There's an area where you can check um, what their, what your Pokemon's affinity is towards in a certain contest style. Because there is beauty, tough, cute, cool, and smart. And if you feed them certain Pokeblocks that allow them to get that affinity up, they will do very well in the first round, which is basically just, basically just has to do with how well suited that Pokemon is to that contest type. So like, for instance, if I feed Toothless, nothing but Pokeblocks, like, spi I think it's spicy for cool, like spicy Pokeblocks to get his cool stat all the way up, and then I enter him in a cool contest, the higher his affinity, the more points he'll get in the first round. It's just, that's, that's all it is. The second round is an appeals round. Now, the way that this works is that each Pokemon takes turns using a move to get their appeal up. Now, as you can see, Leaf, Leaf Blade has an appeal of three right there, but it's also affected by how well the appeal in front goes. So the very first Pokemon, if they do like a really high appeal move, Leaf Blade will do even more and give me more hearts. You're just trying to accrue, accrue hearts in each turn. Fury Cutter can be repeatedly used without boring the judge. One thing that contests don't like is you repeating moves, but certain moves allow you to do this. Giga Drain startles the Pokemon that has the judge's attention. There are certain moves that will allow Pokemon to grab the judge's attention so that they can then appeal for a higher score in a following round. Giga Drain will disrupt that. And also, as you can see, Jam, the, what the Jam effect is, is that any Pokemon that goes after you or any a Pokemon that a move is targeting will either not be able to attack at all or uh, will have their move do less appeal. And Secret Power, the appeal works well if their user's condition is good. Conditioning is gotten through various different moves that up your condition. And with enough turns, you can get your condition really, really high. And a move like this, instead of doing like one hearts, will do eight, for instance. So kind of that's like the best way I can pretty much describe contests. We'll get into it at a much later date. But that's essentially how they work. They're just totally different from battles. And you need to get Pokemon that um, work well with them. Now, you have here, you have your different Pokeblock machines. Now, this one right here is for link cable only. You can't just do this by yourself. You need to combine with other people. Now, using each and every single one of these, depending on who, which people you're with, you're with this guy, these two, or these three, will depend on the rare, the level and style of Pokemon, a Pokeblock that you get, depending on the berry that you've put in. Now, the berry you use will always determine the, the type of Pokeblock, but you will get different combinations with different ones of these. However, you're less likely to get strong Pokeblocks with one than you are with three helping you out, for instance. Now, the Pokeblock minigame is very simple, and we will not join them yet because I need to get a Pokeblock case first, which I do believe I get from this lady. Hello, this is the reception counter for Pokemon Contest. Oh, it appears you don't have a Pokeblock case yet. In that case, we need to provide you with this. So let's do that. And I have no idea how well how well this is going to go over, but I'm going to try to do the Pokeblock minigame really quickly just to explain it and see how I can do with this freaking controller. You look if you're good at blending, would you like to join us? Let's do it. Naturally, you know how to make Pokeblocks. Sure, let's go for it. All right, so we need to get select a berry. And I'm not going to select anything. Well, I don't know. I've got all these berries down here that are pretty good. You know what? Let's do a po Well, hmm. See, like, these ones are the best. Like, Pokeblock and Greenia, anyone that says like that are usually going to be your best berries. But I don't want to use those immediately. Let's do a Pomeg berry. Why not? I've got so many of them. So everyone's going to put their berries in. And then the way that this works is pretty simple. So you basically watch this thing rotate around. And every time it goes past your button, you have to just press it at the right time. And if you don't time it perfectly... And 
There we go. Hold on. Sorry, I'm like really focusing. So the more that you get red circles, the faster you get it up. So I did actually really, really well that time. Red circle with a circle in it obviously is perfect. That means you get it right on. Red circle without a circle in it is all right. And then an X is obviously a complete miss. You don't want to ever get those. The faster you can get that red bar to fill up by getting, by timing it better, the better your berry is going to turn out. So we got a purple Pokeball. The level is 23 and the feel is 19. That is actually pretty decent. It's not ideal. It's not perfect but it is going to be pretty good. So a purple Pokeblock, if we can go to our Pokeblock case, take a look at it. As you can see, it has a spicy and bitter quality to it. So if I were to use that on a Pokemon um, that has an affinity for a certain contest, I'm gonna wanna use ones that are either focused in cool or smart contests. For instance, Toothless would be a good example of this. In fact, let me just show how this works. So as you can see here, we got the conditions of each of the Pokemon, okay? So that condition right there um, you want it to basically go in one direction towards one side. So, like, if I use it on Toothless, for instance. Eat the Pokeblock. There you go, buddy. All yours. And Cool and Smart both are enhanced. So, the thing is, is that you want to focus on one or two contest styles per Pokemon. That is the most ideal thing that you can do because then you will allow them to specialize in those contests and have the best chance because you really need to max out that affinity if you want to be able to have a chance in the later higher level contests. However, there is one exception to this entire rule, and I'm gonna just save that for later in the Let's Play. I'm not gonna spoil it or anything, but later on in the Let's Play, we are gonna be catching another Pokemon, and I'm going to be training it specifically for contests, and I will be showing you how disgustingly effective it is in contests, and it allows you to sweep through every single one without any sort of difficulty. So. With all of that said, let's get on out of here. There are just a couple more stops we need to make here in Lily Cove, and then we will call this good. We can also now go to the Safari Zone, which is pretty awesome. So there isn't really anything over here except for this. This is one of the ports that allows you to connect to Slateport. I beg your pardon, you're looking for a ship? I'm sorry, the ferry service isn't available at present. It is being currently built in Slateport, as we knew, as we already knew. So let's go on over this direction, and I actually want to go down here. And there's those two old people who are looking out at the sea. How sweet. We have this item right here. And apparently this is a lighthouse. This is like the most dinky looking lighthouse I've ever seen. Like what? It just looks so weird. It looks like a foreign like alien object. I don't know. Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen though, that is going to be it for this episode of Let's Play Pokemon Emerald. I hope you all enjoyed it very much. In the next episode, we're going to go over the Safari Zone. We'll head on in there. We'll look at everything. And if we've got enough time, we will then be traveling over to... Uh, Fall Arbor Town? Yeah, over to... No, no, no. Not Fall Arbor. Mauville, but we're going to be making our way to Mount Chimney. And uh, hopefully, finally putting that magma emblem to good use. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this episode very, very much. And I will see you all in the next one.